everybody, this is Praxis, and this is my super simple solar setup that I've set up here temporarily at Normal House. I wanted to set it up here because I've gotten accustomed to the idea of not necessarily losing power during a blackout and all that stuff from my first homestead. I wanted to appreciate some of those benefits here, so I've temporarily set it up here, and I wanted to share with you because Setting up a, your own solar energy backup system is really not that complicated. I know here it looks like, oh my God, look at all those wires. You know, there's, there's 10 batteries in this array, but you don't need something even as complicated as this if you're going to be, uh, you know, just trying the stuff out and actually getting a lot of use out of it. So I'm going to run you through the basic parts of my system, uh, tell you where you could scale down, and, you know, you can decide on your own whether it's worth trying. But I, I can say, that in a crisis, you know, if you lose power, it's really nice to have access to at least a little bit of power. Not like, not tons where you, you know, you can run your, you know, your, I don't know, clothes dryer and your stereo system and your this and your that or whatever, but you know, enough, enough power to char recharge your cell phone, charge up a radio, run a radio, recharge flashlights, things like that. Those are fairly low power devices and you could do that off of a system much smaller than this. So the basic components of this system are first starting with solar panels. They're outside. I've got some Goal Zero ones that I bought way back. Those are a little pricier than normal, not because they're they're better in any way. They're just, they were easier and I was just learning out. They came with their own stands and everything. It was kind of plug and play. I started with those uh, and I'm running those down through this wire here into what's called the charge controller. Charge controller is what is kind of the heart of your system that sends power out to everything. Power goes into the charge controller and it's very easy to know where it is because right here there's just a little icon and it has a picture of solar panels and there's a positive and negative and you just connect the positive and negative feed from the solar panels right in there, screw it in, and now you've got power to the charge controller. Next thing is how do you store that power? Obviously, batteries. I've got an array of batteries here, but you could just do with one battery. Just one of these batteries would give you quite a bit of power for you know charging phones and all those things that I talked about. I've got a battery array because you know I've, I use it for other things. I was using it for pumping water and things back at the other place. And I've run these in, uh, it's kind of an array because I've got these paired in series. So 12 volts plus 12 volt is 24. And I've got 24, 24, 24, 24, 24 across this whole thing all running uh, in parallel, that just gives me more power. It doesn't, you know, that, that's really all it is. It just gives me more power. But you could get by with just one of these batteries into your charge controller. And charge controllers are usually pretty simple. There's just a little picture right here, picture of a battery, positive, negative. Positive runs to the positive terminal, negative runs to the negative terminal. If you're doing a big array like this, I've always heard it's good to kind of hook in at opposite corners of it. With this heavy gauge wire, it seems functionally that it like kind of doesn't matter, but you know, people to give advice and they're electricians and I tend to trust them. So hooking it in opposite corners of this thing. That gives us the ability to store the power. Now, what do we do with it? Uh, there's a couple things. One is you can run DC applications like devices right out of the, char most charge controllers have a little thing. And this one has a little picture of a light bulb. And again, positive and negative, and you could hook things up. But usually most of the devices we're using are AC current, like the kind of current that comes out of your wall, not direct current like what comes out of a battery. Even if you're charging a direct current battery, usually there's an AC charger. So it's usually a good idea to have an inverter. And that's what I have over here. There's a 24 volt inverter. Uh, and it is connected in with these guys. There's a fuse down here uh, to, you know, make sure it doesn't, you know, blow anything up. Uh, and, uh, and that's really it. On, off switch, and it runs power to the house. In fact, the light that's on me right now is running right off of this as we speak. Uh, pretty simple. So solar panels go into the charge controller. Charge controller powers the batteries, and batteries plug into the inverter. It's really as simple as that. Uh, th again, the system is bigger. You don't need a big charge controller like this. There are small charge controllers that I've used very successfully. They're just like $30 or so that could, you know, work totally fine for you. Uh, inverters, you can go as simple as like the kind that you find in an auto shop, like the ones you plug into your cigarette uh, adapter or your power adapter in your car. Do they even call them cigarette adapters anymore? I'm old enough that they used to actually be cigarette lighters and those things. But, um, uh, yeah, I mean, you could just go with something simple like that. Now, there's going to be downsides to that. They're not as efficient, you know, and, and they, they, they can't, you know, do as much power output as, as something like this. But if you want something just small, you want to try something out, you don't want to dump the bank into it and everything, small solar panel going into a small charge controller, going into one single battery, going into just a simple inverter that you get from the auto store. Not very much money there, but it can give you the ability to charge really critical devices if your power ever goes down, your phone, radios, 
some basic lights and things like that. So think about it. It's not, not that terrifying getting into it once you realize how simple all the components are. I have an interview series coming up with a great expert that knows a lot more than me. He's probably going to look at this and, and barf because he'll, the first thing he's going to say is that system's not grounded and it's not. This is not a perfect system. It's a simple system. And it's, I, in my opinion, it's a good place to start. But not being grounded, maybe it's a little dangerous. I've got like sock feet on a damp basement floor as I sit next to the thing too. <laughs> so anyway, very simple, just a few components. Think about it, start small, scale up if you like it. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for new videos all the time. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so either through Patreon or PayPal.